This lecture is going to introduce you to the basic trigonometric functions. We're going to define what an opposite and adjacent side are of a right triangle. And then we're going to define what a sine, what a cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, and cotangent functions are. Let's talk about a general right triangle. We can tell it's a right triangle because in one of the angles there is a box. That means it's a 90 degree angle, so it's a right triangle. And we're going to look at one particular angle, one of the acute angles, and that will be what we've labeled x. And it's x and it's in degrees, so we've left the little degree symbol there. Again, the side opposite the 90 degree angle is the hypotenuse. That is the longest side of the triangle. What we're now going to talk about is a general way of talking about all of these sides in relation to this angle x. The side that is opposite this angle x is called the opposite side. The side that touches is a part of this angle x is called the adjacent side. So we now have the hypotenuse, the side opposite x, and the side adjacent to this angle x. What happens if we look at the other acute angle in this triangle? Notice I've moved my x from the first angle to the second acute angle. Well, the hypotenuse is still the same. The hypotenuse is still the longest side, the side opposite the 90 degree angle. But now my opposite leg, which is still across from my new angle x, is what used to be the adjacent side and the adjacent side of this new angle x is now the longer leg. So the opposite and the adjacent side depend on which angle we're looking at, which acute angle we're looking at. The hypotenuse, as I said, is always the same. It's always the longest side and it's always the one opposite the 90 degree angle. So why have we bothered talking about opposite sides and adjacent sides and the hypotenuse? Well, we're going to use these sides, these three sides, and put them in ratios, and that is going to describe our trigonometric ratios that we'll be using. Here's my triangle again. I've moved x back down to the lower acute angle, and I have my side opposite, my side adjacent, and my hypotenuse. These are the six different ways I can organize these three sides into ratios. I have an opposite over hypotenuse, I have an adjacent over hypotenuse, and an opposite over adjacent. I can also put the reciprocal of these and write the hypotenuse over opposite, hypotenuse over adjacent, and adjacent over opposite. This just happens to correspond to our six trigonometric ratios. Sine of x, sine of an angle x, is defined as the opposite side over the hypotenuse. Cosine of an angle is defined as the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Tangent of this angle is the opposite over the adjacent side. We also have three additional trigonometric functions. We have the cosecant of x, and that's equal to the reciprocal of sine x, if you notice. We'll hear more about that later but that's defined as the hypotenuse over the opposite. The secant of x is equal to the hypotenuse over the adjacent side, and cotangent of x is equal to the adjacent side over the opposite side. Because three of the six functions are simply reciprocals of the other three, most of the time we will focus on the sine, cosine, and tangent. A little trick that I use to remember which of the functions cosecant, secant, and cotangent go with the sine, cosine, and tangent, I look at the words and remember that each reciprocal pair only has one that has the prefix co with it. So sine, spelled S-I-N-E, goes with the cosecant, C-O-S-E-C-A-N-T. Cosine already has the prefix co with it, so it, its reciprocal function is the secant, S-E-C-A-N-T. The tangent and the cotangent are usually pretty easy to remember, but that follows the same rule, only the cotangent has the prefix co in it. Let's go back to the 3-4-5 triangle. If you were asked to give the six trigonometric function values of the specified angle theta, you would have to give sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, and cotangent of this angle theta. Notice I've started using Greek symbols. Theta, 
phi and alpha are common Greek symbols we'll use to denote angles in trigonometry. And how would we go about this? Well, first of all, the sine of theta, the sine of any angle, is opposite over hypotenuse. And for the 3, 4, 5 triangle, that would be 3 over 5. Of course, we'd always write the fraction as a simplified fraction, but we're lucky for this fraction because 3 over 5 is already in simplest form. Likewise, the cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, or 4 over 5. And the third function, tangent of theta, is the opposite over the adjacent, or 3 over 4. Again, the cosecant is simply the reciprocal of the sine, the secant is the reciprocal of the cosine, and cotangent is the reciprocal of the tangent. So once you have the first three, the last three are pretty easy to get. And those are just 5 thirds, 5 fourths, and 4 thirds. Now every teacher has one or two things that they tend to be very particular about. And here is a warning. Here's one of the things I am particular about. If you wrote your sine, cosine, and tangent functions instead of like this, if you wrote them without that theta, you're going to lose points on a test. Because remember, sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, and cotangent, they're functions. All functions need an input. You can't simply say sine equals three-fifths. It's the sine of this particular angle theta that is equal to three over five. So please do not leave out that input. Do not leave out your angle because you will lose points. And those are our basic trig functions. Sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, and cotangent defined in terms of opposite sides, adjacent sides, and the hypotenuse.